Herzlich willkommen zu Webinar mit Swiss Eyes OK, Pack Pressure und Patrick Fischer. Kurz vorweg, die Sprache ist für mich Hochdeutsch. Patrick Fischer wird auf Englisch präsentieren, um alle, die eventuell mehr anderssprachig sind, Französisch auch mitnehmen zu können. Vielen Dank fürs Verständnis. Ja, wie sind wir gestartet? Wir sind, wollten History schreiben, heute Schweiz, Russland. Aber nein, es kam anders. Es ist Geschichte. Die Weltmeisterschaft findet nicht heute statt. Auch nicht nächstes Jahr in der Schweiz, aber wir bleiben dran, um dieses wunderbare Ereignis so schnell wie möglich wieder in die Schweiz zu bringen. Ich könnte lange reden über Patrick Fischer. Ich glaube, alle kennen ihn. Wir sind sehr stolz mit ihm. Swiss Eyes okay hier mit ihm arbeiten zu können. Ich möchte nur erwähnen, nicht nur die Meriten von Patrick. Am untersten Punkt, Punkt seht ihr, er ist einer dieses Bildes Swiss Made Hockey. Er versteht es, vorne wegzugehen und unsere Schweizer Eishockey-Kultur mit uns voranzutreiben. Wie gehen wir vor für heute? Das Ziel ist einerseits, an der Ausbildungsfront euch updaten zu können, top down. Ich bin sehr gespannt und freue mich natürlich auf die Präsentation. Wir haben ein Dreiviertel- bis Stundenfenster vorgesehen. Es soll Gelegenheit geben für Fragen. Ich zeige euch wo. Und selbstverständlich sind wir auch vorbereitet oder möchten Sie einladen, uns weiter zu helfen, diese Art von Bildung weiterzuentwickeln und zu stärken. Was ist Webinar? Kurz, wir haben drei Parteien. Ich darf mich als Präse äh, Produzent versuchen. Ich bin in der Technologie hier eingeschweißt und versuche, Fischi zu unterstützen. Ich nehme Fragen entgegen. Andererseits, die Re der Referent, wie gesagt, er wird euch ähm, über äh, Dartfish äh, die Einzelheiten zeigen. Und letzten Endes, ihr als Teilnehmer, wir haben die Unterlagen äh, bereitzustellen na, per PDF im Nachgang. Ihr habt die Möglichkeit und ich will euch herzlich einladen, Fragen zu stellen über dieses Icon oben rechts. Question Answer. Schreibt sie, formuliert die Fragen während der Session. Wir nehmen sie gerne im Schlussgang äh, nach der Präsentation auf. Und diskutieren Sie mit Patrick Fischer. Nun die Frage und erlaubt mir diesen Gedanken als Vorspann. Was und wie gehen wir damit um mit dieser Art von, von Bildung? Natürlich die Grundfrage ist, wie lernen Trainer heute? Ich kann mir vorstellen, dass Corona uns weiter fordert in unseren Pflichten und Aufgaben. Immer mehr kommt auf uns zu. Das heißt ja auch, können, schaffen wir das mit gleicher Qualität oder und finden wir Chancen, um effizienter eben unsere Aufgaben auch erledigen zu können. Wir haben uns auch vom, vom Development Überlegungen gemacht und ich denke, Webinar kann eine Chance haben, auch in Zukunft nach Corona einen Platz in der Ausbildungslandschaft zu finden. Einerseits möchten wir hier jetzt Bedürfnisse wecken, einen einfachen Einstieg machen für euch als Teilnehmer, aber natürlich auch für uns als Entwickler und Produzenten dieser Ausbildungsformate. Dass es kostengünstig ist im Vergleich zu physischer Präsenz, das ist sicher ein Vorteil, der erwähnenswert ist. Wenn es uns gelingt, in der Entwicklung mit Nationaltrainer, mit ähm, Experten einen Standardkalender zu formatieren, mit Themen, mehrsprachig, 
Zielgruppen vielleicht sogar erweitern auf Manager, Funktionäre, was immer auch ein Bedürfnis ist und vielleicht auch in den Clubgefäßen den Support, wir nennen uns es Label, in dieser Form zu intensivieren, dann wäre das eine weitere große Chance für uns, denke ich, mit Webinar. Und ja, vielleicht können wir sogar interdisziplinäre Angebote machen über Coaching, Persönlichkeitsentwicklung, gibt so viele Themen, wo wir vielleicht die ganze Hockeyfamilie oder noch viel mehr von anderen Sportarten auch profitieren können. Wenn ich mir Gedanken mache, wo Webinar Chancen hat, dann glaube ich, diese Effizienz in, in, im Zeitfenster, repetitiv, die, das Format wird aufgezeichnet, wir sind oder müssen uns klar definieren in der Struktur und der Information. Das könnte die Chance sein. Jedes Format hat Schattenseiten oder eine Kehrseite der Medaille, ob die Interaktion eben verloren geht oder nur reduziert vorhanden ist. Die Teilnehmer finden sich nicht unter sich, die sich selber pushen könnten oder soziale Momente, die bleiben vorweg aus. Ich denke, über alles dem Rechnung zu tragen und vielleicht letzten Endes als Mixed der Methoden die Ausbildungslandschaft zu bereichern. Wir möchten mit Webinar diese Kultur entwickeln. Learning by doing heißt es für den Moment. Bitte entschuldigt, wenn nicht technologisch alles rund laufen sollte, aber wir werden uns ständig verbessern. In dem Sinn, diese zwei Formen kennt ihr bereits wahrscheinlich aus Zoom-Meetings. Das Webinarform in dieser äh, Technologieart eine neue Erfahrung auch für uns. Der Teilnehmer ist zwar passiver, aber nochmal, ich wiederhole mich, benutzt die Question Answer Icon und gebt uns Feedback äh, auch während der Präsentation. In diesem Sinne viel Spaß in der neuen Lernform oder mit der neuen Lernform komprimiert einen Inhalt zu definieren und letztlich unsere Trainerbildung noch effizienter zu machen. Danke, ich freue mich sehr auf Patrick und ich gebe nun das Wort ihm zu Pack Pressure. Mikrofon an, Patrick. Jawohl. Jawohl. Vielen Dank. Jetzt geht's. Herzlichen Dank, Kursi. I switch to English. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity um, you gave to me to, to have this platform to share some ideas uh, what we try to do in with the Swiss Ice Hockey. I think it's a it's a challenging time for for all of us uh, today, like uh, Marcus mentioned, uh, we would have started our um, big hockey party in Switzerland with the game against Russia. And uh, now I'm sitting here uh, giving a webinar and um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's challenging, but I think um, behind the challenge is always a, a big chance. And uh, it's my first webinar and I have to be honest, uh, I did an extra final check 15 minutes ago and I actually lost a lot of it and I actually our pulse went really up and uh, but I'm sure we will get everything uh, in place and uh, let's start it here with uh, the thoughts what we try to do in 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 Switzerland with hockey and uh, next page please Kuzo. Um, our vision is um, clearly defined the last five years, you want to find an identity. Uh, who uh, are Swiss players? I mean, when we think about uh, the Swedes, we know they're very strong team players. They're very balanced everywhere. We know Russians, their skills, their super skills fast. You know, the Canadians with, with their mentality. Everybody has his, his kind of his, his trademark. And, and uh, Switzerland, we like trying to find it and be we are on our way to establish this and with this identity, we want to try to reach the, this goal of, of becoming a top nation. When they think about 
hockey in uh, top nation, they should think about Switzerland. And we are we are not there yet, but we are trying everything uh, to get to that uh, goal. Cruzo. Now, how we'd like to uh, reach this? I think our whole game is built on speed. We realized uh, we know we are not uh, maybe the, the biggest, the tallest, uh, the strongest nation, but uh, we are very intelligent. We can read the game fast. We are very quick. Uh, we are very good skaters. Um, we are willing to learn and we said, OK, our game uh, needs to be fast and everything is built on speed, head speed, leg speed with the puck. And uh, this is one thing I want to talk about it today, how we do it, how we try to do this and implement it in every situ situation of the, the hockey game. So um, next, please, Kuzu. We have this um, attitude as a wolf pack. This is our mindset. We, we hunt together. We try to always overload the opponent. That means we need to skate a lot. We need to work hard a lot. We try to put pressure on um, everywhere on the ice. Uh, it starts with the first four checker. We try to give no time to the opponent. We try to force them into vulnerable situations, into errors where we can capitalize it. And it's been a process also with our playbook in the last um, four, four or five years together with the with the coaching staff to always implement new new things. And I think this last season we finally found I think the, the medicine in every aspect that we can implement that speed and uh, we went forwards, we went hunting and that's our credo. We want to be wolves, good teammates and, and work hard together uh, on the ice. Next, please. What it takes for that obviously is uh, very good fitness. Uh, we put a lot of um, hours into it, thinking about it, how we can make our players fitter, not only physically, also mentally, um, mental toughness, this this uh, extra mile to go. We try to push them in the practices all the time. Um, our practices are very similar. We warm up quite easy with a fun game and then we have some skill practices and then we have always this 20, 20 mi 25 minutes of really really high intense intensity um where we push them sometimes over the limit and uh, we don't want to do that because yeah we don't like the players but it's we want to practice harder than it will be in the game and uh, but we don't practice for hours we our practices are never longer than than an hour mostly but in this in this hour we have this 20 minutes where we go 100% and more out to really develop the skill of sacrificing, pushing the limits and still executing um, the right way. And I think that's uh, where where our games game goes right now. There's no more time. It's always faster and you need to be quick and, and in your head to realize the situation that we are finally um, can then win the games. So this is all the, the preparation, the vision, uh, what we try to do as a, as a coaching staff. And now we look into the real games. How does it look on the ice? So now I'm going to switch into the Dartfish account. And we're going to see the first chapter. It's called the trap. It's called Flush for us, it's behind the net when the opponent is behind the net and uh, he thinks he has time. This situation, the opponent is sitting behind the net, mostly maybe he's in the third period, he wants to um, protect the lead. 
or it's after a change and he has to wait that everybody changes. So here, here's our goal. We have always our F1 guy. This case is uh, Pio Sutter. We always flush him to our towards our bench. So this is the first or the third period. Most of the time you have in the first and the third period, we flush him to our left side. In the second period, it will be vice versa. So responsibility F1 flushing. And this is the place, the area where we want to put our opponent that he comes out and it's a natural instinct. The defenseman is coming always in this position. In our case right now, our F2 is going to push and making forces him to make a pass. In this situation, he's a little bit late, but it's okay. We are still in, in, in safe position. Responsibility for the center. Wherever he passes to, if he goes this way, or if he goes this way, he's going to pick up the passing and puts the pressure on. And our goal with this flush trap is at the red line that the opponent for sure will feel our heat. And we have most of the time a very good chance then to get the puck back and counter the two players which are for checking F1, F2. They keep their speed, they're coming back, that we are strong in the neutral zone and we have a very good chance to, um, to count it the other way. See another example. What they normally then do sometimes, okay, they want to, they feel, they don't feel comfortable when they know the Swiss guys are coming, they step out. Again, F1 is flushing. F2 is ready to come in. Now is earlier. They make a pass. And what we have already, you see in this case, Slovakia, they're unorganized. They don't have any timing. Our center again, he reads where the puck goes. The puck is going to come this way. He's ready to jump. And that's for us a typical situation. What we want to create, what the opponents right now are saying, it's very discomfort to play against Switzerland because, yeah, it seems like they're always more on the ice and, and it takes a lot of skating, but we, we want to create confusion and win the puck back. Last example here, again, we go through the responsibilities. We have F1 coming. Normally, we want to go the wider the better. Flush him out. Our centerman, good position. He knows he reads the play. Where does the opponent go? F2 over here, ready to force the play. So he comes, guy steps out, surprises him, be right there. And now very important, our defensemen have a close gap, that is his winger, close gap, both defensemen are playing one-on-one. -on -one. If they have a stretcher, the one guy stretches with him. If in this case we, we have him, we have both guys right on the opponent and the opponent has no room and no air to breathe and for us this has been a, a very very successful successful um, for checking situation and since since we actually have done this uh, players like it we have way more transition we score more on, on, on transition because we are everybody's on the floor. Now we have, oops, I went one too far. An important 
part of the game we realized is our own blue line. And um, we played a lot of years now, this typical back checking, and then we let the opponent go after the red line, the puck carry, we let them go. And then they have a kite and an easy time to enter the zone. Let's look at this example quickly. Right here, that's what we used to do. So it's, it's a bad example. We got numbers, we are three against two, but we cannot really put pressure on it the way we played it. And now in this case, we are four or five Swiss guys back and they have two and they have full control. So what we, we want to do is we want to have a clear difference. Right now, here, when we see the situation, three against two, and our teams, I mean, we push them to back check hard, back track hard. So we always have a lot of guys in, 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 a, in our own zone, the defensive part of the ice. So here, one guy means we need this guy here, strong side D, standing up, putting puck pressure on it. Our second defenseman, oops. Our second defenseman, he sees the whole play. He's the guy who talks. He says, yell, go, put pressure on him. And our first back checker goes on him right away. So the, the goal for us is that the opponent has at the end to chip the puck in. And when he does this, then we are clearly in a better position, which we will see later on. So here's situation. Don't give up the blue line. Have them have them chip in the puck. Most of the time we get to the puck first and we go on again. Next situation again. Germany's there. One, two, three. Normally we would let him go in. He can walk in. But now we, we, we try to have a good space, force them to make a play, put the puck deep, and then we are again in puck control, or at least in a puck battle, which we will see later on. Another example, good back checking here. Back tracker, we're not stopping, we're not slowing down. This is a normal picture for us. We have Four, four guys back, safe, that's a big strength, back checking, that, that way we can be aggressive, stand them up, force to make a play, and we go the other way. This, this is a typical situation after when he chips it, they're coming in too, and we always want to we tell the players, hey, if they dump it in here, sooner or later, we're going to be six, six players against two or three. So we're clearly outnumbering them and normally should get out of the, out of the zone quite, quite easy. One more example here. Aggressive blue line, he chips it. We want the opponent to not enter our blue line without stress and this year, we changed this and we had way less chances through curling up normally when the, when the opponent he comes in here and he curls up and he gets dangerous. Again here, standing up, we have the puck and we can go the other way. Now in the games, this was now in, 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 in FISP. Same example, back check hard, good gap, strong blue line, and right away we are in this situation which we always want to see as coaches. We have three good back checking position here by number, number uh, eight, Proplon. That's again our D zone. 
Now it looked there in our zone, but we have everything full on the control. And most of the time we come out of the park and then we can go the other way. Similar situation here. Again, back check hard around the blue line. We end up in the corner. But again, we have a clear overload. And at the end, we come out more or less with the puck. <laughs> For example, it's not quite holding the blue line, but I want to show you after they come in, they chip the puck in, and we are not thinking, we're not going here to our net, we're going right to the corner. We want to overload. We want to give them no space. If they have two guys in the corner right now, it's two against two. Okay. Center. He can go, but only if our first back checker is back in track here, then he can go. He's our safety lock. So it's so important. Everybody comes back hard. We need to have this position filled. It's going to be filled by Dennis. We win the puck again and we go the other way. So we overload him, but it needs commitment from everybody that we can actually be aggressive in the corner. We need the two back checkers after here and here that we can go the other way. Another example here. Good back checking here by uh, our Salomon Enzo. Strong blue line. They chip it in. What they normally have to do. Okay, number one is in, number two is going to support, and it doesn't matter if you're a forward or not. Now we have a defenseman here. We go by numbers one, two, three, four, five. Everybody has to read the play. We win the puck, share the puck, and we go out the other way. Now, we talked about the trap in the offensive zone. We want to put them in a vulnerable situation. We want to take away time and space. We talked about now holding the blue line that they have to kind of give away the puck again, put it in the D zone. We saw the follow up from, from the D zone when, when they dump it in that we want to overload right away. And once we are in the zone, and sometimes we play against good opponents. You, have, you don't have time always to force it, but we have clear rules of when we have a chance to force. Right now here, we are in our sector, defense, where we know, call it or dice. Everybody has his position. Sentiment. So now, we feel like, okay, there's a time to, to pressure. We, Roman Yos in this case is very close to him and we have a rule. We don't want to let him go over the hash marks. Right now, we want to stop him here. We don't want the opponent to go up here because when as soon as he goes over here, then it gets dangerous again. Their defensemen can get active. They have switches. The whole zone opens up. So we have a clear goal that we keep them in this area. As soon as this happens, the sentiment overloads and creates a two on one. So this is for us the key that our defensemen is trying to take this route to push them down this way where actually after the sentiment comes in. Now we are in, we are pressure zone, and that's where normally we are in good shape. Our defenseman holds the front net and the two forwards are back in the L shape. How does this look on the eyes? Again, we come in right away, center. 
in this case, the winger, make it a two on one, keep the scrum. This is for us a good position. Now, our third guy, if this happens, if we are two against two, our third man here, he just goes in this position here. He doesn't go actively into the scrum. He wants, he can take the pox hereafter, or he can take the pox hereafter, but we have an overload. And those two wingers are responsible, Tronernet and third guy high. But again, we don't want to let them out of the corner. When they are in the corner, then that feels good to us. Another example. Place. Okay. Well, here we got something. Sorry, guys. Oops. My computer is breaking. Not working anymore. Uh, hang on. I have a breakdown. I I check out how much you are uh, multitasking, fixing <laughs> your computer and answering question. Are you able to do that? Uh, yes, for sure. I try to figure it out here. Yeah. What about practice to this? Can you even give us uh, some advices for use hockey? How do you implement all this great detail stuff uh, for, for use kits uh, like under 13, under 15, under 17, I don't know, different levels of course. Is there any general thoughts on that? How to practice? Well, I think what we have uh, always, the, the most important for us, for the coaches, is to to uh, explain to the players why we do certain things. I think the um, a human being, uh, when he understands something and for him it's it makes sense, then it's easier then to to put it in in place. So in in practice, uh, every drill we do we clarify what's it real for, how we want to do it, what are the details, which are the responsibilities of, of, of each uh, players, wingers, defensemen, centermen. In our um, practices, we try to, I mean, I know not everybody can do this, but if you have a chance, we try to film, video the practices. You don't have to film the whole practice, but uh, the special tactical drills and uh, we try to practice really game-alike. Then we put it on video, we watch it with the players, put it on details, and that's how we grow. I think it doesn't matter if they're 10 years old or if they're 15 or if they're 30 years old, we just have to make sure they understand it, why we do it. And then when it clicks in, uh, for them it gets automatic. And um, then that's how we, we approach it. If you want, I'm back on the computer. I have two more clips, but we can stay with the questions. Up to you. Oh, go on, go on. That's fine. So to every everybody again, uh, write your question in case of you have any to towards Fishy. No matter what, we do the best. But you're up again with the clips, I would propose. OK, thank you. Um, so. If you have a situation again, our defenseman here, he stays on him, stays on him uh, strong. And now I, I talk about the same thing before. We don't let them, want to let him out of the corner. In this case here, if they're down here, it's good. But as soon as they try to escape this way, in this case, Rufenacht, he would lock him down. We don't want him escape here. Keep him in the corner because in the corner we feel good. See, he goes, he has the right body position. The Norwegian player here has no chance. But I like here too. 
communication, that's something. We tell the players, hey, you need to be active. Everybody helps each other, talk to each other, communicate. In this case, Tanner Richard tells Daria Trutman to go. He goes in the position. And for me, when we are in this position, I think that's a perfect picture. Everybody is on the right side, body position. We have the third guy ready to take all the pucks, left or right. We are alert. We are alert, having the position, everything in, in uh, behind our eyes, the, the defensemen. Also, they're ready to get pucks. And out of this situation, obviously, then the next step will be if you play offense, but that's another theme, how we want to do it, how we want to transition from this. I choose this situation because that's one thing we want to do. Once we have the puck, we want our forwards to go the other way. And we'll see it uh, pretty quickly here, what I mean. You see Dario, he doesn't get involved. He just stands there because we don't want to lose three guys. He's the safety, but if somebody's going to get the puck, it's pretty sure him. Here he has it, he plays it, and we go the other way, and he makes a beautiful pass to uh, Tristan Scherbe for a good chance. My last clip here, just because we want to, um, if it comes again, or here we go again with the, Ah, uh, maybe I can't show it anymore. Curso, back to you. He's, he's freezing again on me. We have some more question. Uh, one guy asked about D-Day key points for puck pressure in the D zone. Key points for puck pressure for, for us. We, it's been, it's been, um, uh, also within the coaching staff, uh, a question all the time. When does the second guy overload in, in the corner. Obviously, when we feel the opponent has clear puck possession, he sees the whole eyes, he sees the whole pitch, he can make a play, it's not the time to, to overload. But when we have trust that our number one guy has a good stick on him, he has a good body position on him, and the guy is, is in a vulnerable situation he has no free will to cannot do everything we put in our second guy uh, to create this overload and us we are more aggressive than other teams we believe that we want to take the chance and the risk to sometimes maybe with a good play they beat us uh, with the pass they beat those two players but we always have the strong ball behind of with, with the backside winger and the backside defenseman. But the key point is that we try to keep them in the corner, don't let them go over the hash marks, push them down in the corner, and then the sentiment attacks uh, the puck carrier, and then you're again in, in an overload situation. Thank you. Um, I just better read uh, the question uh, as I got it in. Uh, hello, Fishy. When you explain the flash, you tell that F1 makes four check in the in direction bench. Why do you choose bench side? Are they are there t a tactical reason? Yes, uh, very good question. Thank you. I, for, I forgot to mention this. Why we choose to go bench side? Um, just now you have to go into a uh, your hockey mind. Uh, just think about it. If first period. The bench is on our left side, and our F1 would go straight down the ice and flush them out to the right side. For our F2, there's no way that he has the right timing to get over there and and put put the defenseman in this position that he has to force the play. So we always go first guy goes over, he locks the far side where normally they want to come out anyways and and create their offense. So our F1 goes over, locks the white side. In the meantime, hopefully the second guy after a change or so is in position. And then we have better timing that those first two F1 and F2, they should more or less be uh, around the same level, maybe two, three meters behind. It's a timing thing. 
Plus, we also lock the white side where normally most teams like us to want to break out quick. All right, um, I'm just getting through to some some model. Let me think. Um, how do you break out after the puck win on puck pressure diesel? We. Um, I mean, we just saw the last example for us. Also, it's been a, it's been a process. Uh, do we have the wingers low? Do we have the wingers high after when we win it? Um, we realized we want to get away from the half board battles because a lot of teams, obviously, they play aggressive. Their defensemen want to pinch us and it's hard. I've, I've been a winger. I know it's hard when a D-man comes down and pinches on you, get the puck out. So we choose that the winger, when the demon has a chance to skate, that the demon flies, we call it flies the zone, goes over the blue line, so we are out of the danger zone, and we can again use our speed. So that means in this example, no, most of the time we want to go wide side out, so we win the puck, let's say in the left corner, we, we put the puck behind to the right side, that means the right winger takes off, goes over the blue line, left winger stretches through the middle, and you want to create that speed and foot races. If the defenseman is on the full pressure, obviously, then it's a, it's a normal uh, hockey breakout where the D-man uh, needs support from the center and the winger, and then we break out this way, and for us, Something we stress all the time is that the defenseman after on a breakout, the fourth man he always has to always has to join. One defenseman is always joining play, no wider mud, no wider mud. He has to create his offense, uh, and I think we all know this. But we try to fly the zone and create an offense this way. Uh, there is another like how you communicate uh, the pack possession of the opponent behind her, the, the net, behind her net. So how you go with a player about pressure or contain? There are any, any and of course if I if I could add uh, my my thoughts, uh, how you would teach that to to young players? So I mean, obviously we have. I didn't talk about our new to zone four check where um, they. Everything behind their the blue line to the goal line, uh, when they're, they're there, we have our new to zone four check, which we have a normal steering pressure situation like most players have. But this trap flush, we only use if they're standing behind the net, because in the past, uh, I mean, there's less and less times where that happens in the game, and I'm happy about this, it, it goes fast, but sometimes, it happens and uh, so when they're standing behind there after a change then they know okay they're standing still we're flushing what we want to provoke is that they actually come out and then uh, they're unorganized and they cannot set up and everybody can swing and everybody can pick up their speed and the best player has the box that we can we get them unorganized and we put the pressure on them so you can only tell them they're right behind the net. Hey, F1 and F2, get ready on your horses. Flush them out against our bench. If they step out early, we're right there too, and we're again in our new to zone uh, work there. Okay, I see coming in. We got a couple more minutes. Uh, let me check. There is a just a remark, stick, contact, puck, inside position. Any comments on that? I don't know about the question exactly. Yes, I mean, this. I know there's a lot of um, details to it. Um, stick to the left, stick to the right. I, I have my clear idea about this. I think uh, we can overcoach and we can tell the player, well, when you go there, you have to put the stick to the inside and to the left and to the right. Um, Trust the player. They have their instinct. They know maybe they read something. They're in the situation. Uh, I think this detail is 
obviously super important in, in the box play, uh, PK or, or read the power play situations with the sticks, but otherwise, obviously with the kids is, is a little bit different than the pros, but also there, I think uh, trust the players, trust their intuition where they feel the puck might come, uh, let them think about it, maybe teach them when you see, don't you think maybe the chance that he goes this way is, is more and then to think about this, but teaching, um, over coaching, I am not, I'm not a big fan of this. Well, um, if I'm able to add uh, some comments and about, uh, there is a statement that as a coach, you should know all the details, but make sure what you tell the players what they can handle and that's of course depends on the quality of the player of the of the skill level of the age and the smartness of the player but don't think you have to spread out every detail to the player at the same moment that's could be over coaching as you said yeah i, so, I agree go ahead yes please i yeah, mean i agree 100 percent. i think us coaches uh um in the, in this day of age we are challenged. I uh, think the players, we are, uh, uh, they're connected, they can see, they can read, they have a lot of knowledge, so we need to know the answers, but it doesn't mean uh, we have to tell them uh, always what you think, always our answers. I believe in that they find the solutions. Also in our video sessions, I don't give them the answers. We show a video, um, ask them okay what do you guys see what do you guys think and sometimes they have better ideas uh, than we coaches have and uh, but they have to think they learn the game and uh, that's the way we try to to handle our players and it doesn't matter if, if it's our captain Rafi Diaz who is over 30 or if it's Yannis Moser who is 19 it's they're uh, they're hockey players they have been playing for a long time and if them trust they, they will uh, respond I mean, um, <laughs> some guys could uh, could uh, bring in like you got the smartest and the best player. Would you do the same way in with youth players as well? Do you question them or you think is there a theory to to give him the answer depending on on their level to understand or? Well, I mean, uh, everybody uh, or not everybody, but a lot of guys have been dealing with with kids or his own kids, and uh, I think in a situation um, a curse, it's now in hockey or anywhere. I think it's never bad to ask the, the the kid, hey, what do you think? What what would you do? And and make them think, make them go into the situation. Don't just always tell them everything what they should do. I think it's. The learning is bigger when they realize, okay, also in a video room, hey, I can always be asked, so I better pay attention. And in every situation, they find solutions, so they're ready for an answer. So I think it doesn't matter uh, age level uh, to to be interactive in with, with them and not always tell them uh, everything, uh, what you know. It's I think it's it's for bad, for both. Parties, it's it's uh, easier and better for a way to to involve them. And I I I love asking my my players uh, what they think, and they have unbelievable good answers. Obviously, maybe a twelve year old uh, doesn't give the same answers as a thirty year old, but sometimes I'm sure they they have a, a, a good mindset and they have cre creativity in their brains, and they come up with good good solutions. Oh, absolutely. I love your statement because uh, uh, my message would be don't underestimate the players. If you don't ask them, you never get out of them uh, what, what they really know and what they go into. So it's kind of a culture of delivering feedbacks. Uh, and, and I think the question is, is more worse even for young players, of course, it should be uh, somehow the adapt adapted. We're not going in like in into detail as you did so far that much, but the the culture of question and force them to to solve the problem. I think that's a great thing, and we can develop hockey through that through the player themselves. So. Um, uh, I got a last question, uh, and I tease you a little bit, Fiji. It was a question of the of a participant about can we get the clips as you 
haven't done every clip, so maybe we can get it, grab it, and spread it out to the to the crowd. Oh yeah, of course. I think uh, um, I will. Like I said before, my presentation has been been locked down 15 20 minutes before that but i i will uh, put it together uh, as good as possible and then obviously share it i think it's important that we that we help each other share share the, the knowledge and uh, i would be glad to to deliver that to whoever uh, wants it yeah awesome so um <laughs> i see this is a kind of there is maybe did we go through to that uh, the key of d1 and f1 how how the other guys know now we go, gonna make the pressure it's kind of a little bit about the same question behind the net when we force and we don't force or w w what is the key for d1 or f1 are you talking in the d zone defensive zone uh i it's not mentioned it's, probably, it's kind of overall the, when, the, when is pressure time for for the five for the whole unit of course how you can identify the other players when the, you go for pressure for, for us for us the signal is the sentiment the sentiment decides okay if i go i feel like it's a good chance to go um and and some some guys uh, are more optimistic they think yeah i have a chance to go i create this two on one then the backyard like backside defenseman the backside winger and the other winger they have to shift over and we go into this lock situation it's called l shape and we are all in the corner but the centerman tells the defenseman hey overload we go and uh, and he makes he makes the call Okay, I think we we're pretty good in time and uh, uh, I go back to the presentation and uh, there is a, to finalize on, on your way, uh, Fishy, with uh, your slides, inspiration, great, great uh, work. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, you guys see here a couple uh, matches and with a uh, a face on it and uh, maybe some of you will recognize who it is it's a politic politician he's not a swiss guy but uh, his name is uh, starts with a p it finishes with utin so it's vladimir putin and um, today yeah we would um, have played the russians and uh, our goal was for a long time that vladimir putin tonight would have a, a red head and would be a little bit mad but uh, at the same time, obviously, I just hope that you guys can take some uh, ideas with you. Um, hockey technical, maybe also it's what we talked about. Uh, thanks uh, from Kuso and guys are inspired to, to get better coaches uh, that we can develop our, our hockey country even better. And I want to thank you um, really deeply uh, for your work, I think. For me, it's the kind of the easiest job as a coach because I get the, the product of all all the work in the last uh, last yeah last years. And uh, I want to thank you and and wish you all the best and uh, stay safe and stay healthy on Tuesday Smith and on. Thank you. We're not we're not finished. Fin I would like to <laughs> to summarize, of course, a little bit and uh, to get back to the question. Um, as we heard about the clips, I just try to get into, I hope you, you can see the website. And as I said at the beginning, Fish is one of the guy, he's behind the name of Swiss Made Hockey. And I'd just like to introduce you again, this website coming in to, about uh, to, to development Swiss Made Hockey. There are two maybe uh, chapters I could recommend. First of all, the, the concept of development with call FTEM. Here we put into uh, the talent section so many content we can create uh, for hopefully support you guys or getting back to our session. If we go at sport concepts, Swiss made hockey, there are several things I, I would like to recommend to watch once, like the, the guidelines, what we go for, what we stand for, what is important for Swiss 
hockey. That you can find here by sides or clips, uh, the teaching clips we produce, Fishy produced with the top players, and um, and as well the NHL player are named and showed what's their benefit and what's their individual great uh, power for, for, for our hockey. And overall, um, testimonials, Fiji, I appreciate so much you've stepped in for, for use hockey coaches. Um, I would say we bring it up here to testimonials, your, your presentation, your slides and all these clips you're going to find in a few days when we got it. We put them up on Swiss made hockey testimonials on a big chapter called Patrick Fisher. And uh, again, thank you very much, uh, Fisher, for coming, join us. I thank you guys to join because that's an interest on hockey and uh, with your energy and your knowledge, we, we grow. I appreciate for your feedbacks in coming up email we, we give you, uh, some, some, um, resources or some uh, slides we can all already deliver please give us a give us a feedback with an open uh, spot for for uh, ids and again uh, hopefully we see you next time thanks again fishy appreciate so much you're up with us and uh, see you soon on this floor i hope but yeah. of course uh, we're happy when we see you on the ice thanks all of us uh, thanks all of you guys and thank you Fishy. Bye bye. See you Cheers. next time. Grazie. Ciao ciao ciao.